Is it true that every other creature on this planet, a worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, with a millionth of our brain, they're conducting their life process quite well. When I say life process, we are born, they are born, just like that. We grow up, they grow up, everything is a problem. Tell me one thing that human beings are not suffering. I'm asking you, how much suffering for any individual is actually coming from outside? If they're poor, they suffer their poverty. You make them rich, they suffer the taxes. If they're not educated, they suffer that. Put them to school, lot of suffering. There was a choice between misery and blissfulness. What would you choose for yourself? So if what happens within you is not happening your way, fundamentally, we have not figured what is the nature of our life. Because if you have an out-of-control mind, no matter where you're taken, you will make a mess out of it, isn't it? Somebody can decide whether you're happy or unhappy. Is this not slavery? So, outside will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. If your pleasantness is dependent upon what happens around you, the chances of you being pleasant all the time is remote, isn't it? There is only one thing you can be certain of right now, this is you know what is outward, what is inward. This one thing you're sure, isn't it? Everything that ever happened to you, Darkness and light happened within you. A Roman philosopher, Lucius Seneca, once said, We suffer more in imagination than in reality. People all around the world are suffering in their daily lives. Both privileged and underprivileged people suffer. According to the National Institute of Health, more than 21 million Americans had at least one depressive episode in their lifetime. Let's hear what he says. Hey, what's happening, Sad Guru? I'm Sky. Ryan uh, was my brother. I want to know about the transformation people go through when they come to your center, because I saw a huge change in him when he came back. What is this all about? Is it a fact uh, that in the evolutionary process of life upon this planet, you okay with evolution, okay? Because I come from Tennessee, so I'm asking you <laughs> In the evolutionary process, is it true that we as human beings, we are on top of the pile? The point is this, Is it true that every other creature on this planet, a worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, with a millionth of our brain, they're conducting their life process quite well? Hello? <laughs> yes. Are they? When I say life process, we are born, they are born, just like that. We grow up, they grow up. We make a living, they make a living. We may reproduce, they reproduce. We do all this with enormous fuss. They simply do it. Yes or no? Yeah. Of all the creatures, we are supposed to be the peak. Maybe there's something more to be done, but right now we are on the top. But is it also true that whenever human beings utter the word human, they're always talking in terms of, oh, I'm only human. The word human is always related to the limitations of being human. Very few people ever have used this word, I'm human, referring to the immensity of being human. Always the limitations of being human. So, somewhere we missed the fundamental point. But now the question is, have you read the user's manual? That's all. People have not read the user's manual for the most complex machine on the planet. And somehow blundering through, somehow trying to use it. Everything is a problem. Every simple thing we're doing with enormous fuss. They are simply doing it. Different various processes of life and death, they're doing it without fuss. 
we are doing everything with great fuss. Is this a sign of highest level of intelligence, I'm asking? We are supposed to be the most intelligent and there is no question that we have the most evolved neurological process on the planet, yes? We have the most evolved neurological system that we must be able to sense and feel and experience and perceive, understand and express things in the highest possible way. But no other creature on the planet is struggling like the human creature right now. This is simply because you have been given a super, super computer. Do you agree with me that this is the most sophisticated gadget on the planet? So tell me one thing that we are not suffering. Now people view philosophies, life is suffering. No, no, life is not suffering, nor is it a joy. It's simply there, it's a phenomena. If you ride it, it feels fantastic. If you're crushed by it, it feels terrible. So are you riding the wave of life or are you being crushed by it? That's all the question is. Tell me one thing that human beings are not suffering. If they're poor, they suffer their poverty. You make them rich, they suffer the taxes. If they're not educated, they suffer that. Put them to school, lot of suffering. Not married, they suffer that. Get them married. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say a thing, okay? <laughs> no children, some people suffer that. Children, daily suffering. So you seem to be suffering every aspect of life. So if you offer death, will you go joyfully? No, you will suffer that. So for this to happen, what is it that human beings are suffering? When was the last time somebody poked you with a dagger? Even though you're living in Los Angeles <laughs> That is a long time ago <laughs> So I'm saying, I'm asking you, how much suffering for any individual is actually coming from outside? Minuscule, isn't it? Rest is all on self-help. If they sit, they will suffer, if they stand, they will suffer, if something happens, they suffer, if nothing happens, they suffer. So what they are suffering is their own psychological process. One's own thought and emotion has become such a huge suffering. How you think and feel? How you think and feel, should it not be determined by you? What happens within you? Should it happen, not happen the way you want it? Can you see me, Sky? Where am I? Tell me, use one hand and point out where I am. Ah, you got it wrong. <laughs> you know I'm a mystic, huh? <laughs> now, these lights are fo this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story, right? Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself, where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. What happens within you is not happening your way. Fundamentally, we have not figured what is the nature of our life. Everything that ever happened to you, pain and pleasure happen within you, joy and misery happen within you, agony and ecstasy happen within you, even light and darkness is actually happening within you. What happens in the world may not happen the way you want it, but at least what happens within you must happen your way, isn't it? Without understanding, without understanding even the fundamental of our existence, we are trying to live. Is it true, I'm asking you once again, is it true both pain and pleasure originates from within you? There may be a stimulus from outside, but all human experience comes from within you, isn't it? What's coming from within you must happen your way, otherwise you're just an out-of-control situation. So, my entire work and the fundamental nature of what's offered is called inner engineering. That is, we have engineered the world in so many ways. This has brought us enormous levels of comfort and convenience. Do you agree with me? 
that we are the most comfortable generation enjoying most incredible conveniences that no generation could ever dream of. What even royalty did not have a hundred years ago, today ordinary citizens are enjoying it, isn't it? What is the chariot that you drive, how many horses, huh? Yeah <laughs> I'm saying even emperors could not do four hundred horses, all right <laughs> So, all this is going waste on humanity simply because their experience of life is not enhanced because your well-being will never come from outside. From outside you can create comfort, you can create convenience, but you cannot create well-being. Well-being can only happen from within you because human experience is created from within. Doesn't matter what is the nature of your experience, misery or blissfulness? Yeah, at least for yourself, it's definitely highest level of pleasantness. Whatever it is unpleasant or pleasant, both are being made from within you. But if you are in charge of yourself, would you create pleasantness for yourself or unpleasantness for yourself? Highest level of pleasant. If there was a choice between misery and blissfulness, what would you choose for yourself? Please, you must make a choice, I'm going to bless you right now. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, depending upon what they did today <laughs> But what you want for yourself is hundred percent clear, isn't it? Why such a simple thing is not happening? Simply because this cerebral activity in the process of evolution, it is new. It is a new happening, this… this big brain. When I say new, just a few million years, but in the evolutionary scale, it is new. So we have an intelligence for which we don't have a stable enough platform. You don't need anybody to torture you, isn't it? Some people are thinking one day they will go to heaven and they will be all right. I'm asking you, do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? <laughs> do you have any proof? No, maybe you are already in heaven and making a mess out of it. Because if you have an out-of-control mind, no matter where you're taken, you will make a mess out of it, isn't it? You're on self-help <laughs> You don't need any outside help. You can sit in one place by yourself and make a hell out of it <laughs> Because your own intelligence is turned against you. You can call it by many exotic names. You can call it misery, you can call it depression, you can call it by variety of diagnosis. But essentially, your intelligence has turned against you. Once your intelligence turns against you, nobody, no power in the universe is going to save you. Because wherever we take you, you will be miserable. Imagine hundred years ago, how people lived in this same place and how you are living. Is there any damn thing to complain about in comparison? Hello? Oh, but we are whining like crazy, huh? We are whining like nobody else on the planet <laughs> So the problem is not of the outside. Outside situations are there. Some situations will go the way we want, some will not go. That's how it is. Even if you're just two people in the family, does everything happen just the way you want it? No, that can never happen. Outside will never happen a hundred percent the way you want it. We can manage it to some extent, but at least what happens within you must happen the way you want it. If right now what happened within you was happening the way you want it, would you keep yourself at the highest level of pleasantness or no? That's all that happened to him. Even though death confronted, it didn't matter because What's happening within you is happening the way you want it. No magic, just engineering. Is your happiness dependent on external circumstances? Do you become happy or sad based on your surroundings? Satguru says that we are struggling with happiness and joy because there is the worst form of slavery that we are all in right now. Let's hear what he says. I happened to listen to a lecture of yours that uh, talked about joy and happiness. You talked that joy depends on oneself whereas happiness depends on others. 
uh, I tried a little while to practice it, but what I found was that I was not able to sustain those small moments of joy. I could experience joy when I was completely into it, very passionate about what to do, but somehow when an external uh, person or say some external entity recognizes what I do, the joy is just out of my life. So how do you sustain those moments of joy and not succumb to these pleasures of happiness? If you could, it would be nice if you can share the difference between joy and happiness to this crowd too. <laughs> See, right now, if I tell you, or if you're not me, let's say your dean tells you from tomorrow all of you what kind of clothes you should wear, immediately there'll be protests in the college. If your dean goes further and says everybody must eat only four idlis in the morning, if your dean tells you everybody should get up at five o'clock in the morning, let's say he put ten different rules like this, physical things to do, you will think he is trying to convert you into slaves and you will shout and scream for your freedom, isn't it? But look at yourself and see, right now somebody else, if they determine what should happen around you, you feel like a slave. But right now somebody else is determining what should happen within you. Is this not slavery? This human being, life around you will not happen, will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. And it should not happen. Because if everything happens the way you want it, where do I go? I'm very happy it's not happening your way <laughs> And uh, now that you're a student, you're still a student, I believe about sixty, seventy percent is happening your way. When you get married, the percentage will get reversed. We don't know <coughs> well, we don't know whether which way it'll go. Somebody can decide whether you're happy or unhappy, is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you will be a pleasant human being or an unpleasant human being, is this not slavery? What happens within you, somebody else determines this is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? Isn't it so? It is just that because everybody is like that, it seems to be normal. It is not. It is not normal. Just because everybody is like that, it does not become normal. For pleasantness, we have many names, we call it peace, happiness, joy, bliss, ecstasy. For unpleasantness, we have many names, stress, anxiety, fear, tension, whatever else, madness, whatever. Pleasantness versus unpleasantness. If your pleasantness is dependent upon what happens around you, the chances of you being pleasant all the time is remote, isn't it? In the very nature of things, it's not possible. Only if you are able to create a distance between this and that, it is possible. So if life around you will never happen hundred percent the way you want it, and it should not, unless you're living with machines, Life will not happen and even those machines will freak on you, isn't it? And the machines troubling you every day for something or the other, they do. So, outside will never happen hundred percent the way you want it and if your happiness or your joyfulness or let's not use all these so many words, essentially it is pleasantness versus unpleasantness, well in the sense, Whenever things don't work, there is a habit in lots of people, they will look up, Uparwala. Hmm? Isn't it? The whole world is looking up. Looking up. See, you know the planet is round? You know this? Okay. The planet is round and you are not sitting on top of the North Pole, you are sitting in Chennai, here in the tropical climate. and the damn planet is spinning, so if you look up, you're always looking up in the wrong direction. <laughs> you're invariably looking up in the wrong direction, isn't it so? So in this cosmic space, is there somebody who knows which is up and which is down? Does somebody know? Huh? Is there somewhere, is it marked this side up? 
Nobody knows which is up, which is down, it's just an assumption, isn't it? Do you know really which is north, which is south? In the real sense, do you know what is north and south? It is just for our convenience, we just fixed it, isn't it? Yes or no? Do you know what's east and west? No. Do you know what is forward and backward? You do not know. None of these things you know. So, now you say, I know what is inward, what is outward, let's examine this a little more. Can you see me right now, all of you? Can you see me? Just point out where I am. Use your hands and point out. Can you see me? Oh, you got it wrong. You know I'm a mystic. You're getting it completely wrong. Now, this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in your retina, you know the whole story, right? There is only one thing you can be certain of right now, this is you know what is outward, what is inward. This one thing you're sure, isn't it? This is inward, this is outward. This is the only privilege you have. What is outward, what is inward, this is all you know. Just in case someday if you get enlightened, you will lose that also. <laughs> yes, that's what happened to me. Now I don't know which is inward, which is outward, which is me, which is not me, that's why I'm all over the world. Because I don't know whether this is me or that is me. Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Everything that ever happened to you, darkness and light happened within you, pain and pleasure happened within you, joy and misery happened within you. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? No. What happens within you? Who should determine how this should happen? Somebody else? Definitely you should determine what should happen within this, isn't it? So if you determine what's happening within this, your whole experience of life will be determined by you, nobody else but you, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you if you take charge of this. If you leave it loose, just about anybody will determine it. They will, not consciously, they also like you by accident. Life is neither joy nor suffering, it is just there. You need to learn the art of writing your life and everything will be fine, must be determined by you. That way, you can avoid suffering and live in joy and happiness. Click on the video shown above to attain more wisdom from Sadhguru. Did you like the insights by Sadhguru on the ways to stop suffering? What would you like to see in the next video? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.